The R35 GTR has an open front differential, and everyone knows that an open front differential isn't the best thing for getting all the power to the ground. Uh, you hear people talking about one tire fire and stuff. Well, that's what the open differential does. Um, our, our GTR, even though it's four-wheel drive, is going to make a lot of power, so getting uh, the, the use of all four tires is critical. So what we decided to do is put a limited slip in the front diff. Now, a limited slip helps transfer the torque to uh, both front wheels uh, while still allowing differential action. Now, there's other attempts to make a front uh, differential for the GTR using uh, a clutch type differential like a one-way or 1.5-way. One uh, the one-way, there's a few of those, but the 1.5s, they tend to make the car's electronics go crazy, so we didn't want to do that. Um, there's uh, the traction control and stability control, and they didn't play ball with a really positive locking front differential. So this leaves us with the one-way diffs, like the Nismo diff. Uh, they, they lock going in the drive direction, but not the coast direction and uh, gear type differentials. Um, we didn't want to run a gear type differential at first because once uh, one tire starts to lose traction on the gear type, it tends to run away almost like an open diff. And if you hit a like an FIA curb and momentarily lose traction on the inside wheel, it'll send all the power to that side just like an open diff. Uh, but then we found out about the wave track, and in our opinion, uh, the wave track diff is probably the best gear type. Um, it combines some of the attributes of a gear type, which is like really smooth operation, uh, no ratcheting and jerking, but with a more positive lock of a traditional clutch type limited slip. So we're going to get into the internals of the wave track, and a lot of what we talk about applies to all gear type limited slips, but the wave track has a lot of really trick features that differentiate it from any gear type on the market. So we have Chris from WaveTrack and uh, he's gonna show us some of these uh, cool features. Yeah, so like you said, you know, when you run a clutch type diff, that gives you there's the one and one and a half way and there's a couple effects of that is one, handling, it will give you a positive or instant feedback, but the problem is it can cause the car to push or understeer. Mm -hmm. You have to set the car up with different with bars, suspension to get mm -hmm. the car to rotate. And like you said, there could be some electronics things that get confused, that allow the car to get confused. With ours, yes, ours is a helical type like others, but what sets us apart is the big thing is the wave and wave track comes down to that little wave hub right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And that, what it does, it acts like a cam or a load generator. So when you get that wheel lift, wheel spin, like you're talking about the FIA curbs or any curb, mm -hmm. instead of that staccato effect that will cause that power to disappear out that wheel or anything, we're using this as a bit of a cam system. So we'll go over the assembly of the diff in a bit, but essentially one of the gears, the other gear, and this piece will sandwich between. And to make it uh, really clear, your axles go into these gears. Yep, so the axles will go into here. This is one of our smaller differentials as is the GTR front. So the axles will go into there, essentially into both sides like that. So imagine wheel to wheel. Mm -hmm. And when you're just driving along in a straight line, there's not a difference in gear speed. All this stuff is static. It's just spinning along with a diff. It's, it's mm -hmm. not doing anything on its own. But when there's a difference in gear speed, that's when this will become to ramp up like so. Again, acting like a cam or a load generator on acceleration and deceleration. And we take that initial preload that we have here, and this will actually build the bias ratio mm -hmm. from what it was to well beyond what it, what it was initially. So there's always power being biased to whatever wheel is still on the ground or able to put traction down. And this is uh, what makes your unit unique to uh, compared to other units like the Quay for the Torsen. Yeah, so there's a few things in ours that's patented. One is the wave hub, so you won't find that in any other diff. We also run a bit of a carbon material here because when there's a difference in gear speed, this slides against this surface. So we don't want that to polish itself and as it polishes itself, friction goes down mm -hmm. and it will change the performance of the diff from day one to uh, for the life of the diff essentially. So this was a lifetime material. So that's, that sits in there like that. So that's patented. That friction surface is patented. Mm -hmm. And so are these bias plates. Mm -hmm. So these sit 
in the pinion pockets of the housing like so. So instead of the pinion, normally it rides directly against the housing and it will mm -hmm. polish that surface. And again, friction goes down, so performance goes down. This is a lifetime material, so it'll constantly spin against there and you'll never have any issues with trying to chase setup on a car because, well, the diff is biasing different or doing different things differently, so. That's what I've noticed uh, with my own experience with uh, gear type diffs is that uh, once they start getting old, they don't work as well. And yeah. it's because of the burnishing of the uh, gears. Yeah, so, so that, that eliminates all that. And then a couple of differentials, not all of them, but this is uh, obviously the R35 front. This is actually a 996, 997 uh, Porsche front, but mm -hmm. we do some other stuff. It's, this is our smaller gear package, but they run this additional friction disc that, mm -hmm. that will run just inside. Oh, inside of this. Inside of that. And so that's something that the side gear can also run against. So that'll bump the coefficients up, a coefficient of friction, uh, friction up and allow it to be, again, a more constant, but also give a bit more uh, bias as well for certain applications that, that require it. R35s particularly, a lot of high horsepower cars we were talking about just before this, that even though the front doesn't put a ton of power through, it's good to, uh, good to run this additional friction disc just to help out. Now, um, a lot of our viewers, um, they, they know what a quay for a torsen is, but they don't know how they work. So uh, basically what it does is when you get a differentiation of wheel speed, uh, this gear drives these gears into the case that provides uh, lockup friction, right? Yeah, basically, this is a, doesn't actually lock. So all it is is torque biasing. So um, never, even with the cam on when it's at its max, it's still not locked. Mm -hmm. We're just constant, constantly biasing power. But um, if we take this like so, pop those two sides together, differentials like this and like, this bolts to the ring gear. This bolts, and then to, the, the this bolts to the ring gear. Probably this is easier to show because it has you know people recognize that as something that bolts to the ring gear, and that'll just spin mm -hmm. as one. The gears again are static internally, so when you're just driving along, even s turning, if it's not a big difference in gear speed, not much is going on. It's really under high load situations that there is that difference in gear speed. Axle goes in there into the gears on each side. And when they begin to spin at a different rate, that's really when everything starts transferring power through, essentially driving the gears outward mm -hmm. into the housing, into these pieces, creating that friction. Pinions as well are driving in to the housing. Maybe we can kind of dummy assemble this so oh, our, yeah, our can, viewers can uh, yeah, we're gonna, visualize some of this. We're gonna do that. So essentially we have two halves small end and normally it's the flange side where uh, the, the ring gear bolts to. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit different on, on this one, but similar to that. So we'll take our friction disc and I'll just drop in, drop in like so. And then we take this, our bias plate and then drop that in to those pinion pockets. And then we start assembling the, all the gear stuff. So we'll take the one gear without the mm -hmm. wave profile on it. And that's the one that goes to the axles. That's the one that, that's mm -hmm. the one that goes to the axle. And then the pinions will essentially just drop in like so. So that's one half of it pretty much built. So when it starts to turn, um, when they start turning against each other, the helix of these pinions um, gets driven by the uh, axle mm -hmm. um, and it actually causes it to pop out into the case, it, right, it, to create it, friction. Essentially we're trying to blow everything outwards. So mm -hmm. it's driving these pinions down and these pinions upward into this side, into those bias plates that we, that we have. And these are your uh, friction surfaces right here that create the limited slip effect. Correct, and there's also some friction against the helix mm -hmm. as well, but really, yeah, it's driving into the pinion, into those pinion pockets. Mm -hmm. So then we take our preload pack. So mm -hmm. we got our lower hub with that friction surface. There's some Belvilles in here, just to give a bit of initial preload. Just like the, uh, just like the ones a, in the regular limited slip. Yeah, you, you need a little something initially, and then it has that cam. And that's wave really profile. unique because uh, Torsen and the Quaif doesn't have any initial preload, right? I think the, uh, the Quaifs do have a little bit of a pack. I think everyone, you have to have something, but it's when you get that difference in gear speed oh, okay. that the, 
that if you didn't have the wave hub, once you get that difference in gear speed, that initial doesn't matter. It's all going out that, that unweighted wheel. So we get that with the cam profile in, then we take the other gear that has the matching profile, drop that on like so. And so you can see when there's a differentiation, it rides up the cam, yep. and this actually puts uh, more wedging force onto the uh, case of the diff and, and gives you the additional bit of lock. Yeah, I mean, some of our differentials, maybe, maybe TBR will be like one and a half or two, but on the cam, depending on the size of the diff, the application, and some other things, it could go up to five or beyond five to one for a TBR. Um, I think you talked about earlier, there's a one and a one and a half way. Mm -hmm. I mean, this does work in acceleration and deceleration. So I guess you could call it a two way in that way. Obviously on deceleration, you don't have as much torque or load mm -hmm. going through it, but it's still something that's able to bias power in a, in a really efficient way. What's cool is that that fixes everything I hate about gear type. <laughs> it, it, it does, you know, we get a lot of people that, you know, you show this to and they all have that, that feeling that you have of all the years of gear types and you have to tr convince them just to try it see what see what you think and they come back and it's it's really changed changed their thought so then this is the other half of the pinions we'll just drop in here so these pinions index against the top mm -hmm. gear and then index into the opposite pinion as well so go like that drop everything like so and now this there we go everything is in place Perfect. So nothing really moves apart apart from each other um, until you get that you know the engine torque mm -hmm. going through it, and then you just locate. We have a dowel pin here. Just locate the one non-threaded. This is for locating. Drops in like that, and then we just drop the ARP hardware, which ARP comes in all of our differentials. You're, and it's you're critical good to go. uh, for all the hardware to be really strong on these because there's that that uh, outward thrust load, it and is. it's more than any other diff, I would think. Exactly, right? sometimes we go a little bit, you know, 10 or 11 in this. This one only has uh, seven or six, yep, six bolts in there, but it's enough to, to keep that force on the front. Again, the fronts don't really have a ton of power. So on our GTR, um, we're running this uh, Boots Logic billet differential case, and uh, this kind of helps strength because um, you know, like on, a, on any differential, the, uh, the pinion wants to like tear off the ring gear. Mm -hmm. And if any flex is in there, that makes it worse. So this is a lot beefier, a lot less uh, flex, and it holds the pinion firmly into the ring gear. And yeah. of course, we're running the uh, wave track. Yeah, and so, and I didn't mention that like, most of our differentials, or they're all made from forgings for the most part, except for a couple of these where there's odd shapes that are differential or are forging doesn't fit the differential for, but everything's made from 8620 mm -hmm. on the housings, whether it be a forging or something like this is made from bar stock mm -hmm. and all the internals are 9310. So tons of strength in there. So, you know, you can have this, you can have this, then you start going to other things that, that can have some strength issues. Obviously axles are smaller and something like this. So that's where it would be your next thing to, to look at if that's even an issue at all. So the GTR is your uh, medium size case. It's kind of like, uh, we're kind of like four sizes. We try to keep our internals common. That way, <clears throat> less parts to keep inventory of and just keep everything simple. So every wave track looks the same inside, but obviously the outer dimensions change depending on the application and the axle um, spline and things like that, mm -hmm. that will change. But pretty much four sizes. This is our smallest. This is our second size up. There's a third and a fourth size. The fourth will be our largest if which is actually this is almost one of our smallest differentials. One of our largest will be an R35 GTR. And then the uh, rear. In the rear. We do anything from Evo 456 and GTR fronts. They're small and we do a Mercedes Sprinter van rear diff, which is actually, that uses the same internals as the R35 rear. It's just a slightly larger housing. So there you go. With the wave track, you get the smoothness and seamlessness and the quietness of a um, typical gear type limited slip, but with some of the positive action and um, um, I guess harder, harder grip under differential load in the conventional clutch type. So it's a great compromise. Yeah. I um, can't wait to try this thing. Oh yeah. I mean, it's people like, obviously you'd be running this in here, Shep Trans and these guys, other people have been using the 
wave tracks for years. We were talking about uh, Texas, the, the Texas Mile and all that stuff. Guys are putting some pretty big power through them and they're holding up, they're doing their job. And we offer a lifetime warranty no matter what. So go beat it up, abuse it all you want. If you ever have an issue, come to us, but you're not going to. Wow, lifetime warranty, hardly anything. I mean, that's pretty bold considering some GTRs push 2,500 mm -hmm. plus horsepower yeah, exactly. with slicks and things like that. Yeah, usually when I see a GTR differential back for a service, it's really just us opening it up, just making sure everything looks good. It's because they've damaged other pieces or components in the gearbox and we're just doing a check, but you know, have no problem, no problem there. All right, so there you go. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe. Uh, follow us on social media on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want some technical consultation or you want work on your car, go to MotoIQ.com and click on the Garage Services link and we can get back to you. Also, while you're on MotoIQ, be sure to check out our website. We got tons of tech, probably thousands of articles on there, and we probably covered every technical subject there is on the car at one time or another. So thank you very much, Chris, yeah. for coming out and uh, actually giving us um, this visual look, which is always better than just talking. Yeah. And we'll see you next time.